Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan and I'm back with another video for you and today we're going to take a look at Corsair's latest solid state drive. Now I have tested it as normal but I'm actually here to talk to you about some of the problems with it and just PCR Express 5 drives in general and a lot of that is based on the motherboards at the moment. Uh, so it's quite easy for a lot of us to get super excited, rush out, buy the latest drive which I will say is the fastest thing that we've tested so far so the other pcr express 5 drive that i have had in was the gigabyte one which was doing uh 10 gigabyte a second read and writes this is doing like 12 and just below it in like high 11 read and writes uh but they get they are getting hot very hot and it's not the memory as such it's the controller is working so hard that the little corsair drive comes with an air fan on it, which I instantaneously thought was going to be stupendously loud and was going to drive me nuts. Uh, and now, despite its tiny size, it, it is very good. Like, it doesn't get mega, mega, uh, like, mega noisy. And when you put your finger over the end, so the fan's in one end and it blows across, you can actually feel how hot the air is coming out it. And they've done a very good job with that. Now, uh, temperature-wise, I can punish the drive and get it to about 70 degrees. Now, under normal use, gaming, video editing, that sort of stuff, I was getting around the high 50 degrees, let's say 60 degrees to round it up and the drive performed fine. If you really start to punish it, then you can get it up to that 70 degrees mark. It gets to about 78 or 80 degrees before it starts to throttle. And the only way I could do that was by not attaching the SATA fan, uh, SATA cable that came with it that drives the fan. So I basically just disabled the cooling on it. It eventually, and I did have to really hurt it to get it there, it did get to 80 degrees and then you could see that the uh, writes speeds started to plummet. And it got back down to like PCR Express 4 levels. But... Uh, the critical point is, with a big drive like this, on the majority of motherboards that are out there at the moment, you have two choices. You either run the Corsair heatsink, which I'm going to say is going to ruin every motherboard that you put it in. Because there's, the motherboards nowadays, they've made the heatsink so much of the design that uh, by fitting the black chunk, and it's going to be right there below uh, above your graphics card it isn't going to be doing you any aesthetic favors whatsoever now you can take it apart which means you can use the motherboard heatsink now the uh one of the things i will say if you do want to just fit it straight in the board the he rog hero and the rog dark hero here sorry the dark hero and the formula it won't even fit it literally you'll go to put it in and you'll realize it hits the io it's the same on both boards the z 790a that i have here you have to uh, take the heatsink off uh, but then you also have to remove the thermal paste from it as well to be able to even get it on um, and then the perplexion continues because uh, then the logos are upside down, which I hated very much. Um, so then I saw the screws and I thought, oh, you'll be able to flip the heat sink top around and it will fit. And of course, they haven't thought of that. And I am muchly disappointed because there's just a few screws. You could take it all apart, flip the top around, but no, it sits off centre. So of course, they're big, bad, no bad idea. Now, I know what you're all saying, and that's you can just unscrew these parts down here and you can turn the whole heatsink round, and that is true. But look where the uh, um, connector is and where the fan is. So if we've got it up here, I want to turn the top round, not move the whole fan around. By being able to just swap the top around, it means we can have it fitted either way and we can still uh, change the um, text around. So I just needed to be very clear. Yes, you can turn the whole heatsink around, but 
on this Asus one, for example, we don't really want it fighting the airflow the other way. We still want the fan blowing this way and blowing through, unless we're going to start turning the fan around and making things extra complicated. I just think that just that top bit needed to be able to be swapped. That should just be, I expect you to have thought of this and I expect you just to be able to turn it round. Um, so the fact I thought of that, I thought of it and you didn't, I'd, like, I'm not uh, anything special. That should have been able to have happened because on this board, it's upside down. On the Gigabyte board, it'd be the right way around. Mon motherboard manufacturers don't go the same way, so this should be able to be reversible. Um, anyway, as I was saying, with the uh, Dark Hero and the formula, you can't even fit it. If I'm completely honest, I don't think... I did a Linus. I don't think that this heatsink is going to cut the mustard anyway. I think the, board, the drive would have overheated. On the Z790A Wi-Fi 2, whatever they've called this one, it's a tiny heatsink. I didn't even bother testing it. I know it's going to overheat because it did with the massive one. Uh, with the Gigabyte, however, which is the master, I did test it in that and that heatsink was capable of keeping it below um, throttling, but only just. We were seeing 74, 75 degrees with punishment. Um, so the problem with having such a hot drive is you kind of do need that fan, but it's going to ruin your expensive board. I mean, you're talking like six, seven hundred pounds for the master and the uh, hero or the formula. And then you're going to want to keep the cooler on the formula because uh, it's got a little LCD and everything on it. But then the drive's just not going to perform as well uh, if you punish it. So my, uh, my thoughts here are we kind of need motherboard manufacturers to up their game because we all knew PCI Express 5 was going to become a thing because they all support it. And the heat sinks are just not up to snuff. And this is why it kind of leads me into maybe not with the formula, but then again, maybe so. I actually think until they refine the controllers on these so that they're not using it or they're not creating as much heat like they did with the PCR Express 4 ones, because PCR Express 4 originally was really, really hot and then they shrunk the die down and they uh, did some optimizations and they sorted the heat out. We need that to happen with PCR Express 5. But in the meantime, I actually think there is a call for the wizards at EK to come in and save the day. Because if you want a PCR Express 5 drive and you want it to look good, I think the only way we're going to be able to do it is to incorporate the VRMs, the CPU, and your NVMe, all on a full cover water block from EK. And I think that's really the only way we're going to be able to get these uh, fast drives usable and looking nice as well because as it stands at the moment the fan isn't the problem the heat sink or having to remove your motherboard heat sink to fit it is now i could be being completely over the top and way left of the field and you could tell me at home you don't care you'd actually just like to be able to remove your sexy master heat sink and it doesn't matter, Tom, I'm just going to run the Corsair drive like that instead. Well, I think if that's what you want your motherboard to look like, I think you'd be tripping. And in reality, I think the best thing that we can do is, yeah, okay, you can take this one apart and fit it on that. But as I've said, I think it'd be beautiful if EK could extend a full cover water block and it would just miraculously cool everything down, keep everything cool, calm and collective and give us yet another reason to go and invest in some high-end water cooling. Now, 
EK didn't ask me to say this. There is no sponsorship. There is no kickback. This is just my thoughts. And I base my thoughts purely on, I'd really like to use this drive from Corsair in more stuff, but I couldn't go taking big chunks of aluminium off my boards to have a faster drive. I personally would just buy a PCI Express 4 drive, get it underneath the standard heatsink and have done with it. And we've not even covered the fact that when you use one of these slots, uh, it technically halves the lanes available for your graphics card anyway. Not that it's gonna make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, but still with everything that's going on, I want to keep the look of my board. I want everything to stay cool. And that means we need the wizards at EK to sort it out.